What happens when a Christian has sex before marriage? The first thing I want to tell you is this. It's not love, it's lust. You see, lust wants what it wants right now. Lust wants instant gratification. But love, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not self-seeking. Love does not rejoice with evil. You see, love will wait. Love can be patient. Love can wait until marriage. And when you move in the spirit of the Lord, when you're practicing love, you're growing in your spirit. You're growing in your faith. But when you're moving out of lust, you're not growing in the spirit. You're not increasing in faith. You're growing in the flesh. You see, the Bible says to sow into the spirit is to reap eternal life. But to sow into the flesh is to reap corruption and death. And one of the best defenses against this, now pay attention because I'm going to be speaking about three things that happen when a Christian has sex before marriage. But I just want to say these things very quickly, very quickly. It's not love, it's lust. And this is the second thing I want to say. One of the best defenses against this, not to fall in this lust, is to be sober-minded, to be honest with yourself. You see, the Apostle Paul was a very godly man, but he was also very honest with himself. He said, I examine myself every single day so that I make sure I don't fall short of the grace of God. You know what he was saying by that? I'm preaching, I'm teaching, I'm writing books of the Bible, but I examine myself to make sure that I'm still walking in faith because it can be very, very easy to walk out of that straight and narrow gate of faith. And it can be very easy to go to that wide and spacious road that everybody walks on. And you notice that the title of this video is what happens when a Christian has sex before marriage. Why? Because one of the points that I'm going to say cannot apply to an unbeliever because an unbeliever is already living that lifestyle, but a Christian is not living one of these points that I'm going to say. And it's very important. Three points of what happens when a Christian falls into sex before marriage. So remember, it's not love, it's lust. And one of the best defenses against this is analyze yourself and be honest with yourself. And if you're not ready to get married, be honest with yourself that you're not ready to date. Because dating should only be, now listen, dating should only be through what I get in the Bible, and this is my opinion, dating should only be if you're ready to be married. Because when you go on a date with somebody, you're going to be seeing their character, you're going to be seeing their reactions, you're going to hear their background, and you're going to be able to analyze, is this a person that I'm willing to spend the rest of my life with? See, but lust, lust doesn't care about none of those things. Lust just wants to gratify its own sinful nature. Love just wants instant gratification. And lust doesn't care about the other person. Lust only cares about itself and fulfilling its own desires, its own needs. So what happens when a Christian has sex before marriage? The first thing that I want to speak about is guilt and condemnation. Instead of a person feeling joy and closeness that comes in marriage when they're intimate in marriage, the devil wastes no time into condemning and guilting you. You see, God has not called us to live in guilt and condemnation. The Bible says whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible says that wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. Romans says this, now therefore there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. The Bible calls the devil the great accuser, the condemner of the brethren. All the devil wants to do is condemn and to guilt God's people. So the first thing, now this is one out of three things that happens when a Christian has sex before marriage. But the first thing that happens is, and it has to do with the second point also, the first thing that happens is guilt and condemnation. You start losing that joy. You start losing that peace. You see, God has called you to live in freedom, but you start losing that freedom because now you're feeling guilt. Now you're feeling condemnation. Now you know that you failed God. Now you, you know that you fell in sin and you know that you're in this repetitive cycle. And instead of feeling the joy, instead of feeling the freedom, instead of feeling the peace, the deliverance that comes when you're walking in the Lord, you start feeling guilt. You start feeling condemnation. You start feeling bad. You start not wanting to hang around other believers or hang around the things of God. Now, this brings me to my second point. What happens when a Christian has sex before marriage? Not only do they feel guilt, not only do they feel condemnation, and God has not called you to live in guilt and condemnation. God has called you to live in freedom. God has called you to live in peace. God has called you to live in joy, to enjoy the joy of your salvation. But the second thing that happens because of guilt and condemnation is you start separating yourself from having fellowship with God. The second thing that happens is 
People start to separate themselves from having fellowship with God. People begin to lose that fellowship with the Lord. I'm not saying the Lord leaves you. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that you start to remove yourself from fellowship with the Lord. You start to separate yourself from the Lord just like David. Did you know that David, when he fell into that sin with Bathsheba, he was having relations with her. He was not married with her. Do you know that when David did that, he stopped praying for a whole year? You know why he stopped praying for a whole year? Because he felt guilt. He felt condemnation. And he felt like he couldn't even lift up his eyes to God. Now, David was a man that was always praying. David was a man that was always writing songs. David was a man that anything he went through, quickly he would go to the throne room of God in prayer. But when he fell into that sin with Bathsheba, he couldn't even look up to heaven no more. Why? Because of guilt. Because of condemnation. And what does guilt and condemnation do to many believers? It makes them begin to separate themselves from having fellowship with God. And Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Far from me, you can do nothing. That's the strategy of the devil. He wants to separate you from having fellowship with God. You see, Jesus was a man that also always prayed. Even though he was God in the flesh, he was always praying. He was always getting direction from the Lord. He was always getting strength from the Lord. Even before his crucifixion, he went to the mountain. He began to pray, Lord, if there's any other way, remove this cup from me. But let not my will be done, but your will be done, Lord. And he was strengthened. He was always having fellowship with God. He was always in prayer, always speaking to the Lord. That's where our strength comes from, from our fellowship with God. So what happens when a Christian has sex before marriage? They begin to feel guilt. They begin to feel condemnation. And what does that do? That takes them to the second thing that happens. They begin to separate themselves from having fellowship with God. Just like David for a whole year, didn't pray, didn't write a Psalms, didn't re read God's word. The Bible says that his spirit was groaning in him all day long for a whole year. For a whole year, he didn't pray. For a whole year, he didn't talk to God. Can you imagine how he felt? The Bible says that he felt like his bones were wasting away every single day. But through the grace and mercy of God, God sent Nathan to prophesy to him, to give him a story, a parable, and to expose his sin. And finally, when his sin was exposed, David was able to repent. And then he said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. See, when you start falling into those sins, you lose fellowship with God. You begin to feel guilt and condemnation, and you lose your joy of your salvation. But once David was able to confess those things, he said, Lord, restore that joy to me. If you're practicing these things before marriage, you're not going to have the joy of the Lord. You're not going to have the, you know why you're not going to have the joy of the Lord? Because God's going to take his joy away from you. Because not, God's not going to be enabling you to live a sinful lifestyle. God himself will take his joy from anyone who starts doing these things before marriage. Why? It's not a punishment. It's a way of love. It's a way of reaching. It's a way of gathering. Why is God going to enable his people? Why is God going to enable his children to live a lifestyle of sin? He's not. And the first thing he takes away is the joy of your salvation. You're not going to have that joy. He might not take your salvation away, believe me or not. He might not take your salvation away, but he sure is going to take that joy away. You're going to feel sour every day. You're going to feel guilt. You're going to feel condemnation. But David repented, and he was restored into the joy of his salvation. But I want to read you a second example. Solomon, he began to worship other gods. Now, this happens when you begin to separate yourself from fellowship with the Lord. He began to worship other gods. All these women that he was having relations with, all these women that he was involving himself with, the Bible says that they began to turn his heart away from the Lord. This is a part of losing fellowship with the Lord. You no longer fear the Lord. You no longer have those convictions that you once had, those convictions that were so intense, those convictions that were so paper thin that you, you couldn't go against the Lord. You could never think of doing such things, but because you started breaking this part of God's word, and you started compromising your convictions in this area. Now you start to compromise your convictions in other areas of your life. Another person I want to talk to you about is Samson. You see, Samson was having relations before marriage. He was having relations before marriage, and he began to separate himself from fellowship with God. He began to trust in his own strength. He began to think that his strength came from his own self. And one day when he was in the house of Delilah, he finally told her the source of his strength, which was his long hair. But you know what his long hair represented? The covenant that he had with God. You see, Samson always knew that he had a covenant with the Lord. That's where his strength came from. But when he was in this sin so long, he started becoming arrogant. And he started thinking that the strength came from him. And he finally gave the source of his strength over to Delilah. 
And Delilah cut his hair and he lost his strength. And what happened? He woke up and he said, I will overcome the Philistines as I did before. But the Bible says, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. It was never him overcoming the Philistines. It was always God overcoming the Philistines. But when he separated himself through the separation of his hair, it's a symbol of that separation of that fellowship. When he separated himself from the Lord, God left him and he no longer could defeat the Philistines. Why? That's a consequence of separation of fellowship from the Lord. A person begins to think that it's themselves. A person begins to think that it's their own righteousness, it's their own holiness, it's their own, it's their own self-efforts, it's their own drive, it's their own ambitions. No, no, no. The Bible says that every good gift comes from above. David didn't pray for a year. He felt that separation from the Lord. Solomon started worshiping other gods. Samson started trusting in his own self and he gave the source of his strength up and he thought, I'm going to defeat the Philistines, but he did not know that the Lord had left them. You see, this is something very serious because the Bible says that every other sin is out the body. Every other sin is outside the body, but whoever commits sexual sin sins against his own body. And you are not yourselves. The Bible says that we are the Lord's temple. We are God's temple. So imagine every other sin is out the body, but sexual immorality is against your body. You're sinning against the temple of the Lord. This is something very serious, but keep paying attention because there's always hope. There's always hope in every single message. There's always hope. So a person starts feeling guilt and condemnation. A person starts removing themselves from having fellowship with the Lord. They begin to stray away from having fellowship with the Lord. But the third thing I want to speak about is bitterness. Because a person's feeling guilt and condemnation, and because a person starts separating themselves from having fellowship with the Lord, the next thing they feel is bitterness. Because a person begins to feel disgusted with themselves. They begin to feel disgusted and they start to resent people, the church, and even God. You see, when people fall into this sin, fornication, adultery, sex before marriage, when people fall into the sin, Christians fall into the sin, they know it's wrong. They know it's going against God. But because of the guilt and because of the condemnation, and because they're removing themselves from having fellowship with God, instead of finding the answer, and instead of going to the answer, which is repentance, asking the Lord to forgive you, asking the Lord to strengthen you, instead of being honest with yourself and saying, man, you know what, I'm not ready to get married, so in that case, I'm not ready to begin dating, instead of being honest with themselves, they just get bitter. And they get bitter against church, they get bitter against Christians, and they even get bitter against God. But what's the key? Repentance. God's not mad at you. All you need to do is repent of your sins. And the Bible tells us that he'll wash us and justifies us. The Bible says that when you repent of your sins, God will cleanse you and wash you. And if a righteous person falls seven times, the Bible says, God will raise him up every single time. Now, be honest with yourself. Because one of the best defenses against this is to be honest. And if you're not ready to get married, then maybe you're not ready to date. If this video was a blessing, subscribe for more videos just like it. And if you want to show your appreciation for this channel, you can do so by giving a super thanks. Those are greatly appreciated. Those are always a great blessing to my life. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing.